good morning everyone uh, i am isrudana i am a senior technical lead uh, i mainly working on integration related products so my topic is uh, creating composite services using ballerina so let's first find out what these uh, composite services are a service is a, a piece of software which solves some business problem so there are two types of services atomic services and composite services atomic services are simple services uh, which does not reuse any other uh, service or a system so they are self contained and mainly focusing on a particular business logic uh, composite services are completely opposite of atomic services so they reuse the existing services to provide useful business functionality so in com in composite services since they are reusing the existing services Uh, they don't need to build everything from scratch so they can reuse the existing one uh, these composite services contains one or more atomic services in in this uh, slide in the left hand side side you can see there's a, a a picture there you see there's a composite service consist of multiple atomic services a composite service can contain other composite services too So in the right hand side you can see there is a composite service which contains another composite service. So why do we need composite services? Um, to implement most of the uh, real world business cases these atomic services are not sufficient. Uh, the these services needs to be mixed and matched and orchestrated to build a uh, useful uh, business scenarios. so when we when we are reusing these services we can cut down the development time and also we can cut down the development cost as well and also it will increase the maintainability so now let's uh, look at one of the real world use cases so here uh, we call it as a healthcare service uh, chaining scenario uh, here we have a, a patient who is looking for nearest uh, a uh, hospital details so he has a mobile phone so that means he know his uh, gps coordinates but there is no single service which gives out the hospital information by taking the gps coordinates as a input but there is a service called hospital info service which take a hospital code as the input and then gives out the information about the hospital and there is another service uh, which take the zip code and gives out a hospital code finally there's another service called geo service which take the gps coordinates and gives out the zip code so to to build a c service which take a G, which take gps coordinates and gives out the hospital information uh, we can integrate all these services and call them one after the other uh, uh, in a chain so here first we need to Uh, call the geo service and get the zip code and then call the uh, hospital locator service and get the hospital code and using the hospital code we can call the hospital information service and get the details of the hospital so this is a very simple uh, composition of services so now let's find out uh, composite services in microservices architecture so this is the microservices layered architecture which kasun explained today morning so i am not going to describe much on this i am mainly focusing on bottom most uh, two bottom most layers in the bottom we have core services or atomic services layer on top of that we have composite or integration services layer um, so now let's talk about uh, core or atomic microservices so these microservices mainly focusing on a particular business logic they they don't interact with any other services or any other systems so you because of they are not interacting with other systems they need to write a, a, all the logic from the scratch uh, in composite microservices usually what happens is like when you use atomic microservices you can't map that into a real business use case you need to orchestrate uh, these uh, 
com uh, atomic microservices and come up with the composition of them to map into a real business use case. So that is done by using these composite microservices. So as we know in SOA, ESB does the same thing. ESB is composing different different services and exposing sing a single <coughs> service. So in MSA, that is done by using composite microservices. Okay, so uh, now let's talk a little bit about building composite microservices. So in most frameworks, use the same set of technologies to build both uh, atomic microservices as well as composite microservices. Uh, when you use same technology, let's say for example, if we take WSO2 MSF4J, we use Java. If we use same set of technology to build both, uh, because these uh, technologies doesn't provide uh, required abstraction for network communications, you need to write everything from scratch. So the developer has to spend time on building those network interaction rather than focusing on writing their business logic. So that's going to be a problem. And, and then again, if you take a conventional ESB, if you try to put the ESB into this microservices architecture, uh, because of the monolithic nature of ESB and because of the, some of the stuff like uh, ESB is not container native uh, and it has uh, uh, some, take some memory, it consumes a lot of memory. So due to various reasons, this ESB architecture is not fully compatible with MSA principles. So, we can't use uh, same set technologies to build the core uh, mi microservices and also we can't use an ESB2. So what would be the solution? The solution is Ballerina. Okay, so uh, Ballerina, uh, so as we uh, discussed so far, Ballerina is a programming language which simplified building applications with network interactions. Ballerina provide all these uh, abstractions to connect with different different systems. So Ballerina has built in support for various protocols like HTTP, JMS, file and WebSocket. And also it has native support for most commonly used message types like JSON and XML, uh, those things. And the container friendliness of Ballerina and also the serverless uh, mode of Ballerina uh, make Ballerina the best fit for writing composite services. Okay, so let's uh, talk about uh, how we can build composite services using Ballerina. Okay, he, there are some key functionalities uh, we need to uh, have when we are building composite services. Those are transformation, routing, parallel processing. So these things are needed when you are composing these uh, services together. So let's find out how we can do each of these uh, from by using Ballerina. Okay, so here in this picture you can see we have a client and a service. Uh, this client is send, uh, sending a message in some format and the service is accepting the message in a different format. Okay, so to, do, to send the message received from the client into this service, we need to do some conversion. So that is what is meant by transformation. So here in Ballerina, uh, this is a sample uh, Ballerina program which we have, uh, which we are doing a transformation. Here you can see there are two structs, uh, a, a person struct and a user struct. So those two struct has different uh, field names. Those struct are getting constrained into a JSON message. So by using the transform operation, we can map uh, fields in bet between different struct. So here you can see we are mapping a, a person struct into a user. So if you look at this transform operation, you can see User, you, you username is getting matched with person's first name. So likewise, we can easily do this mapping using this transform operation in Ballerina. Okay, so this is how you can visualize, visualize it in the Ballerina Composer Design View. So here you can see that transform operation. When you click on the transform operation, you will see something like this. So here, this, this is the 
canvas you get to uh, do this transformation logic. Here we have the source, in the right hand side we have the target. From target to, uh, from source to target we can do some mapping. While you are doing the mapping you can apply some operators too. So those operators are listed in the left hand side. So you can extract some a part of the uh, element from the source and only uh, put that into the target. So and you can combine stuff. So those things can be done using these operators. Okay. So next we have routing. So here in this diagram you can see we have two clients and three different services. So we need to route uh, messages coming from these clients into different services. Uh, maybe depending on something on the content of the message or maybe uh, the routing should be done based on uh, some value on the header or may it may be even something based on some property of the message. So based on something on the message we need to route the message uh, through different services. Okay? So this is how we can do content based routing in Ballerina. Here you can see uh, we are getting a request and from the request we extract the JSON payload using get by using the function called get JSON payload. So these functions are natively available in the Ballerina language. So after getting the JSON payload, you can extract you can extract the element uh, by writing uh, this path, and then uh, then thereafter you can uh, write your routing logic. So it's just a simple routing logic which check whether uh, a particular uh, value is equal to some string and if it is equal then it routes the message to some party, if not it routes to somewhere else. Then we have uh, header based routing. In header based routing uh, same thing, the only difference is we are extracting a header from the incoming request by using the get header function. Okay, so now let's talk about the parallel processing. So here in this picture you can see we get a message from the client and at the composite service we clone the message and to and then send to two different parties. So same message is getting parallelly processed from two different services. To implement a parallel processing in Ballerina we have a concept called workers. So workers are execution threads. So here in the main function you can see we have three different workers W1, W2 and W3. Here each of these uh, workers are printing uh, a line hello I am a worker. So when you execute this program you will notice at the same time you will get three uh, uh, statements get printed. This is how we can visualize it in the Ballerina Composer design view. Okay, so now let's uh, try to build some uh, composite services with real services with Ballerina. So I'm starting with a simple atomic service and then I'm moving into a simple composite service and let's thereafter let's see how we can do a service chaining scenario and finally a, a bit more complex uh, orchestration scenario. Okay, so this is a simple atomic service which we can uh, write using Ballerina. Uh, here you can see the service name is equal to a NYSC stock code and this service is exposed over HTTP protocol and it has the context uh, as NYSC stock. So those context uh, is uh, context and the other stuff related to service is configured using service annotations and then we have a resource. So resource is the place where all the requests are getting processed. Here you can see a resource has resource annotations. As an annotation we have defined a method. So here to invoke this particular resource we need to send a request, we need to send a get request so that that will be dispatched into this particular resource. So here within the resource we simply just generate a, a, a JSON payload and sending it back to the client. So it's a very simple atomic service which we can write using Ballerina. So this is how it looks uh, in the Ballerina design view, in the composer design view. Here we have the protocol on top and we have a resource here and resource annotations are defined like that. 
Okay, so now let's go into a, a, a bit more complex, uh, a bi uh, a simple uh, composite service. So here we are uh, trying to uh, uh, build a, a simple routing service. So uh, the client are sending uh, some uh, stock code request. So based on something uh, on the message, we need to route that request into different uh, stock code providers. So there are, there are uh, two services. We have NASDAQ service and NYSC service. So let's see how we can do that. This is the uh, compose, uh, how we can uh, visualize it in the composer design view. Here there are two vertical, uh, two vertical green lines. So those represent the downstream services. That means these uh, services. Okay. And here in the blue line, we have the uh, service composition. So the routing logic is written in the, in the blue line. This is how it looks in the source view. So here you can see the downstream services are represented as endpoints in Ballerina. So endpoint is the logical representation for the, uh, these uh, downstream services within Ballerina. And we have a simple logic as we discussed before, it's the routing logic. We get the uh, JSON payload and extract a value of, of a particular key in the JSON message and check the value whether it is equal to NYSC or not. And if it is equal, then we send it to the NYSC endpoint. If not, we route the message into the NASDAQ endpoint. So it's a simple composite service we can write using Ballerina. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about uh, some service chaining scenario. So here uh, we have a mobile application and uh, from the mobile application we need to locate the information about nearest ATMs. So uh, there's no single service which uh, gives out these uh, ATM details. So we have two different services. We have a branch locator service which gives information about the branches of the bank and there's another service uh, which, which is called bank info service which says uh, whether these branches has an ATM or not. So we first need to in invoke the branch locator service and thereafter from the response we got from that, we, we need to construct the payload and invoke the bank info service. So this is how it looks in the composer design view you can see there are two interactions. So here the vertical lines, the green vertical lines represent the, uh, the backend services or the endpoints. So we do, so there, there's a uh, line, there's a horizontal line going from logic to one of these green vertical lines. So that is the operation or the action executed against a particular endpoint. So here we, we do the first service invocation and then later we do the second service invocation. So, it, so it's a simple service chaining scenario. So this is, uh, uh, so we first need to uh, construct the payload and then we need to invoke the service one. And from the payload we receive from the first service, we need to construct the, uh, the payload required by the second service and then we can invoke the second service. Okay, so, so in this section, this is how we construct the payload required by the first service. So here we have a, a, a JSON payload and we need the zip code over here. So the zip code is extracted from the incoming request from the client. And once you extract it and then we set it as the JSON payload and then we invoke the first service and get the response. After we get the response, we need to extract the branch code from the response we received from the first uh, service. So, uh, so again we are constructing a JSON payload and assigning the branch code uh, to that. Okay. So then by using that request, we invoke the second service. Okay, so now we are moving into the more complex scenario. So here the scenario is about uh, online vehicle license renewal system. So in some of some countries, you need to obtain a, a revenue license to drive a vehicle on roads. So that has to be done annually. 
to uh, get a revenue license you need to have a valid insurance certificate and also you need to have a valid emission test certificate which says that your car uh, is economically uh, car is environment friendly <coughs> so uh, so they are, so when we when we are trying to build a such service uh, so we we need to first validate whether these certificates are valid for this vehicle so th that functionality is already provided by two different services we have a insurance service and a emission test service so which will validate whether this vehicle has a valid certificate or not and then there's another service uh, already there which issue the license and obviously since we need to do a payment we need to integrate this with a payment gateway so unlike in the service chaining uh, scenario in the service chaining scenario we have to call each of these services one after the other but in this case these two services the insurance service and the emission test service can be invoked parallelly because they are mutually exclusive so they are not dependent on each other so what we can do is we can invoke them parallelly and get the responses and see whether they are valid if so we can invoke the rest of the two services okay so this is the structure of the service we are going to develop so here you can see we have a service called revenue license service and it has the path as a license and then we have a, a resource called certificate validation resource so this resource will allow some somebody to validate themselves whether they have a valid uh, insurance certificate and emission cert test certificate for for a vehicle so that will uh, before uh, trying to get a license they can validate themselves so it has the resource path as validate cert and there's another resource called license resource that is the main resource we are talking about here that will uh, validate the certificate again and uh, take care of issue in the license so this is the process first we need to so this is the license resource we which we discuss first we need to validate the certificate and then depending on the result of that we need to do the payment and then we need to call the license issuer service and get the license and forward it back to the client so that's the uh, process so as i mentioned this uh, uh, we have we had uh, two resources one to validate the certificate and another one to uh, uh, issue the licenses so in from both these uh, resources we need to well uh, we need to uh, validate these certificates so as the first thing in the uh, license resource we, we we still need to validate the certificate so what we have done is because those uh, logic is common to both resources we have extracted them out to a function so that is what we called as this certificate validation function so in that function we need to call this insurance service and the emission test servi service together and see whether they are valid so uh, so here you can see we have uh, used two different workers within the fork so fork basically fork the incoming messages and that will take care of executing two different workers at the same time and then we join the result and depending on the result we can return the result back to the caller okay so here is the source code of this uh, certificate validation function here you can see we have two workers out there uh, insurance worker and the emission cert validation worker so these simply calls these uh, two endpoints at the same time and uh, so you can see uh, in the join so we join the results of two different folks and uh, see whether these results are valid or not so here one thing you can notice is we we have the luxury to return multiple return values so here uh, if it is if this one of these uh, 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 certificates are not valid we return false indicating that the validation has failed and also together with that we are returning an error message to the caller so this is how we invoke the function you can see from both resources we are invoking the same function 
and here this is how we do that invocation simply it uh, calls this validate certificate function with having the request as a parameter and then we get the results into two different variables so depending on the uh, value of uh, valid is valid uh, uh, variable if it is not valid we generate an error message and just send back the uh, response back to the client if it is a valid one uh, we can proceed with the payment to do the payment we need to construct the payload required by the uh, payment gateway okay so what we have done is we are going to use uh, the transform function to do this transformation so we have a, a struct called payment which holds the structure of the payload uh, required by the payment gateway and we extract some of the values from the incoming request and then we map that into the payment gateway request using the transform operation okay so after uh, constructing the payload now we can invoke the uh, payment gateway so if it is uh, successful if the if the invocation to the payment gateway is successful we can proceed further if not we can return an error back to the client at that moment so then if if the payment gateway invocation is successful we can call the license service to issue the license so it's simply a, a simple get request you need to do with uh, passing the vehicle id in the url so that it will return the license we can respond the uh, we can immediately forward the license back to the client using the forward operation so uh, so that's about the uh, service orchestration scenario it's a bit more complex than the earlier service chaining scenario because it involved parallel processing using workers and it has some transformation logic involved uh, so so that's all i plan to cover in that uh, uh, um, scenario so we discuss about uh, uh, we give a introduction to composite services and why we need composite services in uh, microservices architecture and we discuss uh, how to build composite services using ballerina so if you have questions multiple instance of the same yeah all the examples you have shown mm -hmm. in the, during the days are all based on one single instance of the Zurich service yeah so you can actually so you can uh, fork the request and you can call the same instance by mm -hmm. uh, invoking the service at the same time it's like uh, you can define the same service uh, so let's say we we represent the service using a green vertical line right so if you want to invoke the service multiple times you, it's a just a matter of uh, putting an action from the logic into this green line so you can do it Yeah, we have a unit test framework, so uh, that is already there in Ballerina. So unit test framework is there, but if you, if you want to mock some services, that functionality is also provided by Ballerina. Yeah. So in your examples, it was always hardcoded yet for the or something? Yeah. So how do you Yeah, so uh, yeah, I got you. Yeah, so at the moment uh, we, we, we haven't integrated any registry into Ballerina. So right now we are working on introducing a registry concept. So we, once you get that done, you can externalize these uh, endpoint URLs as parameters uh, which will uh, depend on the different environments. Okay. That was exactly my question actually. Ah, okay. It was ah. forking because then it's in the same message. Ah, I see, okay, right, right. yeah, okay. Just one of them, no balance then. Ah, right. And by name, you know. Okay, right. You got the answer. Okay. Yeah. Transform function is it also going to support 
more complex transformation? Yes, yes. We are keep working on that. It will support a looping kind of transformation which XSLT provides. So, those will be available. Okay. Yeah. Is there any support for JBT? Sorry? Is there any support for JBT? As we have uh, since we need to get security parameters. Uh, yeah, not at the moment, but we are working on that. Okay, is there any other question? Mm. Okay, right. Uh, thank you.